the feeling that nothing really dies. You know, in, in truth. Because anything that is of God can never really die. Right? There's always love and life in God as God. So when she was saying eternity at the end, when she said, I am, it was like, wow, yes. I, in the I am, everything is. And there's no loss. There's no grief. There's no fear. There's no sadness. There's just joy. And I feel that, you know, it's hard for us to take that in because it seems very real that we do have loss, that we do have grief, right? So when I say in my talk title, the impossibility of loss, it's like, hmm, wow, okay, well, how can that be? Because it sure feels like I lost so-and-so, or it sure feels like I could go on beyond the body. It could be I lost my house, I lost my money, right? I lost my car, I lost my spouse, I'm getting a divorce. So anything like that, there's this consciousness of loss in this world, and it's all externalized. So everything is external. Everything that we lose appears to be external, right? So I'm here to remind you that in reality, that comes from something that we have to acknowledge and be present to, so that way we can heal and come back to the I am. Which is that nonsense, right? That darkness, that fear that we live in. That is the core of everything that we suffer from comes from the dream of separation, the metaphysical book of the Course in Miracles would say. Not only that, it only in the dream of the ego is loss possible or grief. Only in the dream of the ego. So this morning we're gonna play a little bit. And we're gonna, I wanna offer you the opportunity to see things differently. Right? To have the opportunity to have another way of coming from when we come up with this topic of loss, grief, and recovery. Because I felt like Donna did at the beginning when I heard the topic. I was like, I thought of death right away. I thought of sadness came to me and I was like, what kind of topic is this? Right? I even went to Facebook and asked people to give me you know, a suggestion on the topic title. And I got one which was the impossibility of loss. Then I was happy to see when I Google searched, um, because I do speak a lot, many of you know I speak a lot from the Metaphysical Book Course of Miracles, and I Googled loss and death and grief, and the Course of Miracles has lots to say about it. So I was like, okay, this is good. Now I get to share it, right? So we have the opportunity to see loss differently, right? I'm gonna begin with a lesson from the course which is called The Power of Decision is My Own and within it, it says something very powerful. Probably something a little bit extreme but I know that you can handle it. And possibly there's some things that you might not understand and that's okay, I invite you to put it on the altar. And you will understand it at whatever level your spirit is available to understand it. So I just invite you to just take it in because it's a bit different. No one can suffer loss unless it be his own decision. Decision. No one suffers pain except his choice elects the state for him. No one can grieve nor fear nor think him sick unless these are the outcomes that he wants. And no one dies without his own consent. Nothing occurs but represents your wish and nothing is omitted that you choose. Here is the world complete in all details. Here is its whole reality for you and is the and it an only salvation and it is and only here salvation is. Continues. You may believe that this position is extreme. And I just said that, right? Wow, it's pretty extreme what I just said. You're probably thinking, what is it, the heck is Maria talking about? You may believe that this position is ex extreme and too inclusive to be true. Yet can truth have exceptions? So think about that. Can truth have exceptions? If you have the gift of everything, can loss be real? Can pain be part of peace 
or grief be part of joy? Can fear and sickness enter in a mind where love and perfect holiness abide because we are one in God? Can f and then it goes on to say truth must be all-inclusive it be, if it be the truth at all. Accept no op opposites and no ex exceptions for to do so is to contradict the truth entirely. So when I read this, I was like, holy moly, right? It's just very radical, it's very extreme. But what I'm talking about here is the dream of the ego, is exactly what I just expressed, right? The, the only way that separation and loss and grief exist is because of us thinking that we are separate from God. And everything that happens externally is just a projection. And guess what? We have the opportunity to change it. The power of decision to decide differently. There's another lesson in the course called, I elect to change all thoughts that hurt. I elect to change all thoughts that hurt. So then, you think that your boss hurt you. You think your, the news that the doctor gave you hurt you. You think that something your spouse did hurt you. You think that maybe the loss of the loved one hurt you. The truth is, in its entirety, is that the only thing that hurts you, in truth, are your thoughts. Your thoughts hurt you. What you're thinking about anything at any given time hurts you. And I'm not saying here you don't need to grieve. I'm not saying you don't need to be sad. I'm not saying that you need to pretend and be happy. As much as I love to for people to live in their happy, because that's what I preach, and to live a happy life, there's something to be said about feeling your feelings and grieving and feeling that and allowing that to help you to awaken to allow those feelings to move you back to God versus be a victim of those feelings versus making it so real. The more real you make the grief, the more, the more sad that you get, you feel it and you let it go versus making it such a big deal and letting it have a hold of you. You use it as an opportunity to learn to grow, to decide with God and not against God, to come back, to come back, to come back, to come back, to come back to the I am. And I would like to touch upon real quick before I get into a story, is that when you think about it, let's talk about loss of death. Let's just think about death for a second. Have, has anybody here seen a, a dead body? All right. Many of you have, right? So I've seen one. And my first thought is that there is no way that that's all that there is. There is no way that this person is just that. There is no way. If, 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 if God is good, if God is holy, if, 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 if God is oneness, if God loves his children, if God knows us to be his perfect children of God, why would it just be that? There's more than that, so much more. That's why I always say to people when they've lost a loved one or if, I, or if I have lost a loved one, I always think about that. I always think about that that person is very much alive in spirit. Very much alive in spirit and through all eternity and still exists here and now. Just apparently they're not in, the, in a body and perhaps they're probably even happier. Because we're stuck in this like madness. Have you guys taken a look at where we are right now? Right? It feels like there's, this is horrendous. And I'm not going to say that lightly. It feels like we go through stuff. It feels that things die. It feels like we go through big problems at work. It feels like we have problems with finances, right? It feels like or we're experiencing all these crazy things. But what I love about the spiritual practice and what I love about unity, what I love about what we're doing here, you guys showing up for yourself, your spiritual practice, especially when you start studying the Course in Miracles metaphysics, which I share with you here, you have the opportunity to see it differently. And you start to understand that you're in this cuckoo world, right? 
you start, you, you, you know you're in it, but then you start to practice these spiritual principles of unity, the spiritual principles of the Course, and you start to kind of disengage and get unhooked from the drama. You start to be in the world, but know you're not of this world. And things happen, and they don't bother you as much. Or if something happens, and instead of becoming a victim, you step into your greatness. That's what's different. You start to be different. You're like, and then you start to see it work. You're like, this is working. I feel peace. And I would never feel peace in this circumstance. You're like, this, work, I this works. I want more of that. <laughs> Let me practice. Let me practice. Let me practice. That's what's happened with me in my life. It's an opportunity that I've given myself to see things differently. In 2013, I was speaking here. Um, not on a regular basis, but I was speaking here as a guest speaker a couple of Sundays um, on, on different occasions on different Sundays. It wouldn't be every single Sunday. I was still doing my Spanish service, and I had never, ever canceled a speaking engagement. And this was the first time I did. And it was due to me having to go into emergency surgery. And that emergency surgery was something that I don't think I've truly shared here before just because I hadn't had the opportunity, but today's the day, right? So I suffer from having an atopic pregnancy. So I couldn't come. So what happens is, is that I had one of my tubes rupture, but I didn't know I was pregnant, I was six weeks, and it ruptured inside of me, because it was stuck in my tube. So I had to have emergency surgery, and can you imagine how I felt? To go into the hospital, and to find out all in one moment that I was pregnant, that I was gonna die, and that I had to have a surgery all in one moment, right? And I started to get really delusional because I had lost so much blood, and I was trying to convince her to put it back in and change this and change that. She's like, no, Maria, you're gonna die. You have to get into surgery. So when I got into surgery, and I came out of the surgery, I remember that I sensed a sense of such sadness and such loss because of what had happened. But what happened is in that moment, I had such a revelation that I was suffering because I was crucifying myself because of something I did or didn't do in the past. So I was thinking about certain decisions I had made to bring me to where I was at, and I wish I would have had done them differently. So I was crucifying myself. Why did I do this? Why did I do that? Oh my goodness, I can't believe this is happening to me. I'm a victim. I'm a spiritual leader and I've ended up like here. I had all these stories behind it. So of course I'm going to be suffering. Can we all relate to crucifying ourselves because of something we did and rehashing the past? So in that moment, it lasted a hot second. That's what happens when you're studying. It was like for one minute, I had the suffering, I had my moment, and, I, and that, there's that moment that I just thought, and I share this, and a lot of people use this, it's just, it's very freeing. I said to myself, wow, Maria, give yourself a break. You're in the hospital, you've just gone through this crazy surgery, apparently had a miscarriage, and you're beating your, yourself up about it. This is the way we function. So I said to myself, you know what? I started to realize that I was crucifying myself because of something I did, which is already gone. I can't go back in time and change it. We can't go back in time and change anything. It's done. So guess what? I did the best I could with the awareness I had. I did the best I could with the awareness I had. I did the best I could with the awareness I had, and I was free. The Course says only love is, love is real, all else is an illusion. The Course says to remember forgiveness. Forgiveness is remembering only the love you gave and received in the past. All else is an illusion. So at that moment, I realized that I didn't lose anything. I didn't lose anything. It's only in my mind. It appears in form that yes, that I had a miscarriage, that I lost something, but there was this such peace, this such connection to God that I have everything and lack nothing. It's, there's no, there's, there's, it's either black or white. It's not in the gray. I have it or I don't. And I choose to be in that I do. 
there was a Facebook join, um, Facebook page that I joined that was called the Atopic Pregnancy Group just to have some comfort. I had to get out of there. I had to get out of there because it was all about suffering and loss and, and, and believing and all this stuff. It doesn't work for me. Not that it's bad or good. Everybody has their path and that will help somebody. Right? But at this point in my life, I'm not going to focus on loss. I'm going to focus on that I am unlimited and that in God, I cannot lose anything. And just to come out of that surgery and all the stuff that I could have made it mean and choosing not to is such a victory. Not letting that bring me down. So I invite you to think about anything in your life of which could be just so horrendous. And to remember that you can see it differently. That you can choose to be a victim of it or not. It's up to you. Choose love or fear. Love or fear. And within when there's a loss showing up in your life, you can feel the fear. You can feel the sadness. But I invite you to at some point give it up and be resilient. So I invite you to just be with that. I remember that it was a very supposedly horrifying surgery because when you have something like that happen, they really need to go deep when they're going to do the surgery to get to the fallopian tube. I mean, women, you, you know where that is. That's far in there. <laughs> you got to go in there. Got to go deep. So then I had had, you know, a loss of blood. So I had to have like three blood transfusions. So you would think that I would be a victim. No. No, thank you. I'm not going to play that card. Because I know better. And I want to raise consciousness, not only for, not, not, not only for me, but for all of us. Because as I remember my truth, you remember your truth. As I stand here and I share the truth, I also receive the truth. Because as I teach, I learn. I'm actually talking to myself right now. I'm talking to myself. Thank you for showing up. Because we're healing together. We're healing together. So I invite you this, as I open up this month's message with a hopefully with a bang. I want you to just be open to the opportunity to see loss and grief differently. And that the recovery is in coming back to God. And the recovery is in being willing to see peace instead of that. So I'm willing to see peace instead of this. Whatever that is. You feel your feelings. You invite the Holy Spirit in and say, Holy Spirit, let me see this differently. Let me, let me judge this through your eyes. Because the ego would judge it and would want to be a victim of it. Have the Holy Spirit judge it for you and you will be free. It's up to you. It's deep within you is everything that is perfect. Ready to radiate through you and out into the world. It will cure all sorrow and pain and fear and loss because it will heal the mind that thought these things were real and suffered out of allegiance to them. So at this time we close our eyes as we close in prayer. Father, what you have given cannot hurt. So grief and pain must be impossible. Let me not fail to trust in you today, accepting but the joyous as your gifts, accepting but the joyous in your truth. Right now, I let go of anything that might be heavy on my heart this morning. I let go of anything from my past right now. I just let go and rest in you, God, and allow everything to just dissipate into the nothingness of where it came, as only this I am that I am, this moment exists now. 
I offer up everything in the altar right now, God, everything I think I need, everything that I think is missing, anything that I'm fearful of, I just offer it up in the altar as a gift, as a gift of getting out of my own way and just giving it over. Right now, anybody that's having any health issues right now, we bring them to mind. It'll be people that are in the congregation. Maybe a loved one that's in your mind. As my mom is right now present in my mind as I pray for her as well. I ask you to pray for anyone that needs prayer this morning. As we send everyone love and light, perhaps you want to pray, pray also for yourself. We're so grateful. We're so grateful. As we all declare, and may it be God's will. Amen.